Hey, my friend, I'm going to show you in this video an exercise that you can practice in the next 30 days that's going to help you play chords in any key you want on guitar. This is a principle that I teach in my free mini course. So if you like this video and you want to go further after that, you can check out the first link in the description box to get my free course on spread triads. So the exercise I'm going to make you practice for 30 days is to play major scales horizontally on the fretboard. So usually on guitar, we think more vertically because it's way more practical. It helps us to have more economy of movement and to remember the scale shapes up and down the fretboard, right? So if I'm playing C major... It's easier to remember the geometrical shape of that and it, there's a lot more economy of movement than if I do... <laughs> right? And it helps us connect the positions uh, yeah, a lot better, right? So if I'm playing minor pentatonic, it's a lot better to think up and down. It's a lot better to think up and down because you can really connect the positions together. And vertical also helps us with individual chords. So if I want to create a new chord, I can use my scale shape and I just have to know how to build chords, which is to, to stack triads. In other words, we skip a note in our scale and we stack all of these notes. In other words, you stack the odd numbers. So if I have a scale like this and I put a number on each note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, then I know what to stack. So if I need a C major chord, I start from my first note and then I stack the 1, the 3 and the 5, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, right? If I need a bigger chord with bigger extensions, let's say I need the 1, the 3 and the 7, I'm going to go 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 3, 7. If I need the 9 on top of that, 1, 3, 7, 8, 9. If I need the 1, 3, 7, 9 and sharp 11, for example, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, sharp 11. So 1, 3, 7, 9, sharp 11. Right? So it makes us, uh, it's a lot easier to create chord extensions when you know really your scale positions uh, in a vertical fashion, right? But it's only helpful for individual chords. If you want to play chords in all key, like all seven chords of each key anywhere you want, then that's when the horizontal thinking of the fretboard is going to help a lot. So what we're going to practice is to play our major scales from left to right on one string only. At first, it's going to be confusing, but after 30 days, it's really, really going to help you play in all keys. So for my C major scale, if I start on the third fret on the fifth string like this, I just need to remember the formula tone, tone, semitone, and then tone, 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 semitone. So two tones and one semitone, and then three tones and one semitone. A tone means two frets above. So if I'm here, a tone is gonna be like this tone. So one, two frets, right? And a semitone is going to be one fret above. So that is a tone and that is a semitone. So once you know that, you just have to, to go in order. So you start here, you go tone, tone, semitone. And from here, three tones. Tone, 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 semitone. So once again, we start here. Tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. And then you can start not saying it and just feeling the major scale like this. And a major scale should sound instinctive, right? You know how that sounds. If you go too fast and you don't do the right order, it's gonna show. 
right? Something's wrong. Something felt wrong, right? So the goal is to practice that from the fifth string and the sixth string. Why only those strings? Because it's the strings we're gonna use to build our bar chords, which we'll, we're gonna see in a minute right here. So what I would do is every night for 30 days, I would pick a key and then I would practice my, uh, my major scale horizontally. So if it's for C major, I'm gonna do right here on the fifth string, starting from the third fret. And then I would find a C note on the sixth string, which is the eighth fret, and I would do exactly the same thing, right? Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. The only detail here is that we are too high up on the fretboard. It's gonna be impossible to build a chord from here. So another rule is that each time you go past the 12th fret, you're gonna jump back down one octave. So how you jump one octave down is to do minus 12, minus 12 frets, right? Because an octave is 12 frets above. So if I play my C major scale here, I start from the eighth, I go eighth fret, 10th, 12th, and when I go on the 13th fret, I'm gonna do 13 minus 12, which is one. So I'm gonna jump back down on the first fret and I'm gonna complete the rest. Tone, 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 semitone, right? So I got my tone, tone, semitone, jump back down, tone, 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 semitone, right? And then do that each night with a new key. You could do B flat, so B flat from here. And then from the sixth, oh, jump back down, right? And once you do that every night, it's gonna be super easy to do it from any key you want. B flat, F sharp, C sharp, right? And then now you might be asking, what is all that for? It's because it's gonna be the starting point for all the chords in your key, right? So if I come back in the key of C major, for example, now that you know where to place your finger on all seven notes of the scale, you can know all seven chords of the key also. So the first note where you're starting, you're always going to build a major chord on top of that, right? So the, the last time I made a lesson to show you how to play in all keys, I didn't know that I would attract more beginners. So I'm gonna take the time and show you actually how to play the bar chords. So there are two ways to play a bar chord from the fifth string, right? You can start with your starting note on the third fret of the fifth string, and then bar your ring on the fourth, third, and second strings like this on the fifth fret. And then you're gonna create a C major chord. That's the major chord shape. There is another way to do that. You could use your three fingers, the middle ring and pinky, and then use your index to bar the rest. So on that version, you could even play the first string if you want. Right, so that's the major chord shape. On the second note of your scale, you're always going to build a minor chord. So the minor chord shape goes like this. Right, so you still bar with your index, you put the ring on the, in that case, it's gonna be on the seventh fret, the pinky on the seventh, and the middle on the sixth fret. Right? And then on the third note of your scale, it's always gonna be a minor chord too. On the fourth note, it's always gonna be a major chord. On the fifth, it's always gonna be a major, major chord. On the sixth, it's always gonna be a minor chord. And on the seventh note, which I'm gonna play one octave down, it's gonna be a diminished chord. So it's gonna be played like this. So index, and then middle on the third fret, pinky, and ring. So now you can play instead of just, instead of just notes, you can play full chords. And then you can pick any of these chords and those are gonna be the right chords to play in your key of C major. And then you can do exactly the same thing, but from the sixth string, right? So if I play my C major. So the shape for a major chord from the first note is gonna be like this. 
So it's exactly the same shape than the minor. You place the same types of fingers at the same place than the minor version of the fifth string, but now it's from the sixth string. Then on the second note, remember, it's always minor. So the minor shape is just removing your middle finger and barring really the rest with your index. And then the diminished shape, which we're gonna play here, uh, there's no way to really play comfortable diminished uh, from the sixth string. My favorite is like this, but it's not a bar chord. Right, so it's, it's gonna be your middle finger instead of your uh, index. Middle finger, then the ring, index, and pinky. So it's always the same order from any point in any key. The first, fourth, and fifth chords are gonna be major. The second, third, and sixth chord are gonna be minor. And the seventh chord is gonna be diminished. So if you know that principle, now you can play in all keys. So if I start from F sharp, for example, I just play my major scale horizontally first to make sure I have all the right notes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It, we don't say eight, we say one because it's exactly the same note, right? So knowing what is the order, I know that the first note is gonna be major, second minor, third minor, four major, five major, six minor, and the last one, seventh diminished. So if you wanna write a song, for example, in the key of F sharp, you know that you can choose all of these chords if you want. The chords all fitted into the same key because that's how you find the key. So it's not like a, a super easy trick. You have to practice that stuff. You have to sit down to practice your major scale horizontally for a few weeks and then to memorize the order of the chord structures, right? Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. It's always the same order in any key you want. If you, go for, if you wanna go further, there's my free mini course in the description box right here. I teach about harmonization and horizontal playing like this in the course, but I also show you spread triad chords, which are easier to play than full bar chords like these. So if it was too much of a handful, a little bit, go check out my free course. I'm gonna take my time, show you all shapes of spread triads. I'm gonna go back through some of the same principles and you can even download and print some pre-written chord progressions and exercises that you can practice more than what I just showed in this video today. So check it out, first link in the description box. It's my free gift to you for watching my video until the end. I hope that you like this lesson. You can subscribe for more to my channel if you want more in the next weeks. And I'm gonna see you real soon. Until next time, au revoir.